create fashion for diabetes technology such as insulin pumps and continuous glucose meters. And the reason I'm doing this is because I found that it's really difficult for people with diabetes, especially women, to figure out where to put the pump. And the insulin pump is shown to be a better method of insulin delivery, but becomes an issue of being part machine and wearing this thing on your body and how do you hide it, how do you wear it, how do you talk about it. So this is a series of products that try to address these issues. And this one slides over the pump clip and have, becomes this base for these interchangeable accessories so you can clip it onto your um, top or waistband. This one slides over the pump under the clip and you can again clip it wherever normally you would put it so on a shirt or along the waistband and what I'm using here that makes it so special is this material that interfaces with the pump. It has these shock absorbing capabilities so it protects the device while also becoming an accessory. This is another piece that um, I created from looking at how a lot of women wear the pump which is in their bra and it slides over the pump and makes it more comfortable and you can tuck it in, put it back where it normally goes and then bring out this base component that's sort of like a bib that you can build your accessory on. And this is a really great option for low cut shirts and dresses and situations like that where there aren't really pockets or something to clip it to. So this becomes a really great way to embrace your health and show off and you know start a new conversation and a positive conversation about living with diabetes. Now all their conversations easier to start with people because people say, oh, I really like that. Like, what's She's that? Like, oh my gosh, what is that? And I was like, oh, it's this new accessory that I got and um, I just really like that people, you know, notice it and everything. No, it's not just a piece of technology that I'm wearing. It's actually part of me and part of, you know, how I'm dressing. Get Jessica up here. First of all, congratulations to the winner. So you're well accessorized, okay, I see. Okay, I made the new piece for the event. Excellent, excellent. First of all, congratulations. <laughs> thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, and what's the title of that film? Um, well, the title of my company is Hanky Pancreas, so I Hanky mean, Pancreas. That's just one yeah. of my videos. Yeah, that's it's just, I just, can we all say that? Hanky Pancreas? Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, yeah. I just the uh, endocrinologist out in the audience. I just wonder, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, I, I just love the idea of that coming out of their mouths. Yeah. Um, as as a designer and as a diabetic, yeah. um, is it intuitive to use design to improve your particular sort of healthcare issue? And how is that generalizable? Do you think? Uh, yeah, I think it is. I think I've found in this process, I feel like there's there's a reason that we're all given certain things, you know, the good things as well as the bad things, the talents that we have and, um, and then the struggle that we have. And I think it's our responsibility to put those things together, so. Has diabetes always been presented to you as some sort of external phenomenon and that there's a tension between you seeing it as a part of your life and maybe healthcare seeing it as a set of accessories, a set of external sort of devices and procedures that you have to do? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess it, there is there is sort of a separation between the self and then the the objects that you use or you know all these different things. I feel like there's a way to integrate it more into your identity. Like there's there's devices that are created and they're for millions of people, but millions of people are all different. So why do the why do the devices all look the same? How do you present yourself to the world as as an individual when you're given something that that doesn't represent you at all, because you were not part of that process. How do, uh, how do doctors respond to your sort of fashion accessory uh, notion of uh, an insulin pump? Uh, some, I, I've, um, some are just like, oh, that's nice, and then other ones are more you know, excited about it. And I actually went to, a, I just moved to Chicago, and I went to a new 
endocrinologist there and she had heard of my stuff. So she was like all starstruck. She was like, oh, that's you? Oh my God, I can't believe it. And um, so that was really cool. It's exciting because it's, it's exciting when you meet those doctors that are more you know, open to those ideas because I think that has changed and I've seen that change. You know, I was diagnosed at four and um, just the, the type of, I think it is changing, you know, or the type of doctors that I'm seeking are, are more the ones that are gonna be open and excited about that. Because I remember um, in 2006, I was seeing a doctor and I was like, I have a great idea, like I'll blog my blood sugars and I'll call it Humablog, which is like a, a pun on, you know, a type of insulin, Humalog. I was like, yeah, and you can go look at it. And she's like, I don't, I'm not gonna do that. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Okay, well, my mom will look at it, you know. So <laughs> you can always um, count on mom. Yeah, with my the mom. Blog, my yeah. mom's the number one fan, so yeah. So how does it feel to be like the Vogue cover girl for endocrinologists? Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. Uh, it feels That's pretty good. Pretty wild. No, it's I mean, you funny. never expected that at Parsons. Huh? Yeah, no, I, you know, um, it's fun. I think it's it's exciting to a lot of different types of people, which is cool. It's like you got the fashion people, like. Um, Perez Hilton had me on his blog, and I, it's just funny. It's like talk, people talking about fashion, but they're talking about health. Or people talking about health, but they're talking about fashion. So it's interesting um, to bring those worlds kind of together and bring them outside of their own world and start talking about something else. It's well, you certainly have, uh, with the troops coming back from Iraq, who have this sort of fashion orientation with prosthetics yeah. that's completely different from my generation, where the whole aesthetic was make it look like a, uh, you know, a, a, a real flesh arm when right. it obviously isn't. Right. Uh, th those guys like make it look like a robot. Yeah. Because that's me. Exactly. Uh, and, and that's really part of this transformation between fashion, health, and interchangeability of all those concepts. Jessica, thanks so much. Yes, thank you. This is great to be here. Thank you.